Hi everyone, today I'm at the Real Little Italy with Mary Jane. <laughs> it's December 11th, 2019, around quarter to 6 p.m. and it is 36 degrees Fahrenheit, 2 degrees Celsius. She's never been to this Little Italy before. I hope you enjoyed the previous video we did walking Manhattan's Little Italy, but now we're in the Real Little Italy. Let's see, I'm excited. I, I've scheduled not schedule, but I, I thought about coming here to the real little little in the Bronx for I don't know how many months now. And finally, Action Kid <laughs> brought me here. So <laughs> I'm very happy about that. Thank you. And thank you for having me in your video. All right. And we'll get our first impressions of Little Italy. Well, her first impressions. I've been here many times already. But maybe we can get some first impressions of some food here because that's something I haven't tried too much yet. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see. Okay, let's go. So the main area of Little Italy is one street in the Bronx. It's called Arthur Avenue. And this is Arthur Avenue right here at the beginning of it. This is a fun video because it was it's almost a requested video, right, Kenneth? Yeah, it is. Because um, that, that video that we shot in Manhattan, Little Italy, actually was so successful. You guys liked it so much. And many people in the comments suggested to come here to the Bronx, to the real Little Italy. So um, it's fun. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, look at this. Oh, my God. Look at that cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Calandra cheese. Look, I've heard that there are places here where they even make mozzarella. And here is the explore. Oh, wow. Wow. Shall we go take a look inside? Yeah, why not? Little Italy. Hello. Wow. Can we just take a, take a look? We are it making a video. It smells so much like cheese in here. Take a look at all these cheeses. Again, the smell, guys. The smell, we cannot communicate that through video, but oh my god. Oh. oh man, I just get hit by so many cheeses in here. It's incredible. Goat's milk, sheep's milk, Sicilian, Papado. I don't even know the names of all these cheeses. Well, pecorino is uh, goat cheese, oh. not goat, sorry, sheep cheese. Wow. Sicilian from Sicily, from Sardinia. In Sardinia they have a lot of sheep and sheep products. Wow. <laughs> They're all from the south, I must say, because Calabria. Oh, thank you very much. Oh. Uh, we have a wow. little taste. So this is what cheese? What cheese is this? The name is Prima Donna. Prima Donna? Prima Donna, mm -hmm. oh. It's Fierce Lady. Yes. This cheese is a combination of the Crida and Parmigiano Reggiano. Wow. Oh, okay. Where is it produced? Huh? Where does it get produced? This one is from half Italian and half Dutch. Wow. Okay. This is okay. her first time in Little Italy. I'm showing her around. So. Oh. Yeah. Okay, let's try it. Oh, I'm going to try. Ah! That wasn't good. I just dropped it on the floor. It's okay, don't worry. Mmm. It's, it's strong. Mm -hmm. Well, that's because of the parmesan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I gotta pick it up. No, don't worry, don't worry. It's, um. I'll throw it out. Yeah. Parmesan <laughs> is a very old cheese. It's aged for oh. 12 to 24 months. I'm not an expert, by the way. <laughs> I may say something wrong, but usually it's 12 to 24, mm -hmm. depending on the quality. Take it, it's for you. Okay. Mm. All right. Really delicious. Mm. And by the way, Gouda is a Dutch cheese. Oh, good. It's way milder and it's fresher. Mm. It's still a um, hard cheese, though. Oh, wow. Very good combination. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, Asiago cheese. Asiago is um, a town. Uh, actually, it's, it's not a town. It's um, Altipiano. Uh, it's in, in the mountains. I don't know the, <laughs> <laughs> the right word in English. Um, but it's in the region of Veneto, which is in the northeast of Italy. It's mm. next to my region. 
and so this reminds me of home a little bit <laughs> <laughs> yeah i've heard of asiago before oh smoked mozzarella this i've never heard before smoked is it common to have smoked mozzarella here smoked mozzarella. yes yeah. is it it, does it become hard inside? Mm, no, no, soft. It's still soft. Mm. Never heard that before. Oh, Robbiolo Zella. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> this <laughs> really reminds me of home right now. <laughs> wow. Mascarpone, Galbani. See, this is commercial mascarpone that you would find in the supermarkets. And we make tiramisu with this, usually. That's wow. why we, we buy it. I mean, <laughs> in the families, that's what I mean. The rogiola. Rogiola is a very fresh and creamy cheese from uh, Lombardy, if mm. I'm not wrong. I hope I'm, I'm not making mistakes, because otherwise Italians who are watching this video are going to be very angry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, no. Oh, it has these cookies. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mulino Bianco is a Barilla brand. It's a very commercial brand, but everyone in Italy has breakfast with these cookies and caffè latte. Caffè wow. latte is simply what you call latte here. Mm. It's coffee and milk. But we have like 20 different types and shapes of these kind of cookies. Wow, so many different products here. They are made so that you can dip them in the coffee and milk. So they're very special, they are not normal cookies. Balsamic vinegar of Modena, glaze. Wow, this is all imported. All right, well, thank you very much. Thank you, thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. We're going to go to the retail market before it closes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, they're almost closing too. They close at 6. They close at 6? Let's yeah. go straight there then. It's very close by. It's uh, it's on the avenue. Yeah, it's not too far here. I think it's only a few steps. Oh, okay. But it's right now. It's five forty-eight. We only have about ten minutes to make it. Okay. The restaurants will stay open later. They were so nice, they gave us all the cheese and told us yes, about yes. it. Very nice. I told you the people here, they give out like free samples and they want you to try out all their stuff. Yeah, that's good, I like that. <laughs> Look, sometimes that shows that they know what they're offering. Oh, here offering. it is. Arthur Avenue Retail Market. You're going to be shocked at this place. Let's go. Okay. All right, we have some music playing. I may have to overlay it with the thing, but we'll oh see. Oh my god, it's so Christmassy here. <laughs> yeah, I know. They have Look everything the here. <laughs> wow, this is amazing. Look at this, sweet and savory. And they decorated everything with the wreath and... Oh, look at this, cheesecake <laughs> and red velvet cake. It's so oh nice in here, oh my god. I know. People, I mean, we should add this location to the places to visit for Christmas mm -hmm. in New York because... Oh, definitely. I didn't know they decorated so much for yeah, Christmas. Yeah, there's such a Christmassy feeling. Yeah. Like, they have the bar so you can get a beer. That's a nice bar. I like yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, do they have stuff like this in Italy? We have food markets like this. Uh -huh. They're not as fancy though. They're wow. way more rougher. And we don't have bars in the food markets, as oh. far as I know. I've never yeah. seen anything like that. The meat market, they just turn off their lights, unfortunately. But this is where you get all the Italian meats, different kinds. I must say I'm not a big meat person, so I don't <laughs> mind that they close them really. <laughs> oh, let's see the sandwich. <laughs> Burrata. burrata, homemade fresh burrata. Guys, burrata is one of my favorite products or foods. It's so, so delicious. <laughs> it, it's not 
big in flavor. It's kind of um, it's the same dough of the mozzarella, but it's only the outside. It's like a little bag of mozzarella dough, and inside you have cream mixed with. Ooh. Okay. Cream mixed with um, other pieces of mozzarella. It's hard to explain in English, but it's something. Oh my god. Oh, look up too. <laughs> Holy. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. Salami. I think salami is a special kind of ham, right? Or is it different? Um, look, ham is that one. Okay. See that big one? Yeah. That one comes from Parma, which is the most famous one that we have in Italy. Parma is a city in Emilia Romagna, oh. um, which is a region in the central Italy. Um, so that's ham, which is the thigh of the pork. It's the raw thigh of the pork. It, it's not cooked and it's just uh, cured, I think. That's the name in English. So it gets um, cured for months and months and months. Like, it's a very long process. Wow. Salami is not like that. It's cured as well, but it's a mix of different, um, different cuts of the pork mixed together with fat as well. Oh. And then they stuff um, the gut they stuff a piece of gut with this dough and then they let it cure, they let it rest for months and then you can, it's finally ready, you can slice it and eat it. Wow, so that's why it's mixed with fat and everything. Wow, hey, you guys hey Buonasera, this is the first from time Italy. in Bronxville, Italy, I had to bring you here. Um, dal Friuli, Nord-Est. <laughs> oh wow! Oh my god, okay, see guys, this is Parmigiano Reggiano, which you call Parmesan, I think, and it's, um, uh, it's three years old. <laughs> Actually, three he, years he's old. making a, a wow. short face. I have to try it. Thank you, grazie. The they make you look good. Yeah. <laughs> grazie. Grazie. Wow. See Parmesan, have you seen? I don't know if you filmed while he was cutting it. You never no, cut didn't. it with you never cut it with a normal knife because you you have to kind of follow um, the the dough. I don't know how to explain the crystallization it. Crystal crystallization. The Parmigiano is made with a special milk. Mm -hmm. And the milk these cows are milk only during the summer months for the grass for the spring months and the grass is the best. Oh wow. So to be in Parma on a beautiful spring day, it's, people can't understand how beautiful the weather, the climate, the grass. So these cows eat this grass, their milk is the best. Now, it's made with a particular heat when it grows in there and makes that crystallization. When it reaches three to four years old, it's amazing. Wow. Three to four years old. All right. Okay, let's take it. Let's try it. Asaggio for the young lady. How is it? Not the one you buy at the supermarket here. <laughs> <laughs> no. Mm. Oh yeah. The way to enjoy this. Oh. Oh wow. Thank you. This is a peach for second. Peach for a second. Cheers. You see, thank you. I, I wasn't kidding. Mille. This is the Salute real little Italy. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> I must say this feels like the real Italy. <laughs> this is real Italian welcoming. Like when you go to places in Italy, not everywhere, of course, and especially not in the big centers, in the city center of the big cities. But this is how you get welcome. They just offer you stuff just because. <laughs> I don't know, you are friendly or something like that. <laughs> so, cheers. Okay. I wanted to ask who's that guy in the oh. picture. All right. Excuse me. Who is the guy in the picture? 
Oh, I'm sorry to hear. Wow. That's him. That's him. Mike. Rest in peace, Mike. But he brought us this incredible store in Little Italy. Seriously. In the Bronx. All right, I'm gonna try this cheese now. So mm. I'm gonna see how this is. <laughs> so we're going to do it by yourself. Let's see. Okay. Oh. Watch, watch it. Watch, watch, watch. Take it down. Oh my god. That's true talent there. <laughs> Man, he's got some skills. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> No doubt about it. And Manhattan, there's hospitals for people like that. That's true. But let me tell you, this cheese is so good. It's so rich and so different than regular Parmesan. <laughs> mm. So, you can taste that there are um, many different flavors, right? Like mm -hmm. the flavor is not flat. It's not as flat. Usual. Mm -hmm. like, um, the longer you chew it, the longer you swallow it, the longer you, you taste the flavor that remains into your mouth after you swallow the food, and the flavor changes, it develops in your mouth. Mm. That's how it's a rich cheese that way. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I will come back here to get that cheese a hundred times. Let's see. <laughs> try this one. I'll try. Cheers. Wow, that is rich. The slight taste of fruitiness. Yes, it is. So Fruity. good. So good. <laughs> Shall we continue? Yeah, let's continue. All right. You can finish that. All right, I'll finish it. For you. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Something very special. Oh, wow. What's that? White truffle. Oh. White truffle. Just came in yesterday. Ciao, girls. Enjoy your eggplant on Mijano. It's original from Alba? We just found it yesterday. It's incredible. I'm overseas in another continent, on the other side of the world, and uh, oh my God. <laughs> what import export can make nowadays? Yeah. Incredible. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Thank David. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Enjoy the brunch. All right. Thank you. Remember, you're in the real Little Italy. That's it. Sure, I'm There's nothing. I Not, will. Nothing on the Manhattan. <laughs> <Italy. laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Bye, ciao. ciao. And they even got some bread here with some different sauces. I'll try a piece of bread. That's so fluffy. Let's move out of these people away. Yes. They're getting ready to close up. It's past six now, so. That's why I wanted to come here before it all closed. Are you here? This is all the produce section. Yeah. But I don't produce think they have pasta. something something very exotic in the produce section because yeah. if you import uh, fruits and vegetables, they are fresh. It's not like not easy. Oh, this is you can see all different kinds of pasta. These are all artisanal pastas. Mm. And later, I'll, maybe I will show you how to recognize a good pasta from a lower quality one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this panettone here? No, it's not. 
Yes, Lem this is. Lemon Doro? What's the difference? Uh, these are, this is Pandoro. Oh. This is very popular in Italy, this brand also, like exactly like this. Um, it's like a sweeter version of the panettone and who really enjoys food says that this is crap. <laughs> Because <laughs> panettone is the real deal. This is okay. just sweet this thing for kids. Thing. I actually prefer this one. Don't <laughs> say it to anyone. <laughs> A lot of different products here. Panettone, panettone. Other cookies. It's like entire walls of panettone for Christmas. <laughs> so panettone is the perfect gift for any occasion in the Christmas time. Uh, in the whole month of December when you go visit your relatives or your friends or anything, if you don't know what to bring, you can bring a panettone and maybe a bottle of wine mm. and that's perfect. Okay. These are also very common for Christmas. They're just oh, baskets, gift baskets, you know. Yeah. They have for sure one panettone and a bottle of wine or olive oil and then a bunch of different stuff. Maybe a salami or something like that. Okay. Should we go on? Yeah, I think there's not too much left in this market. There's also the gelato stand to the right. And who is this guy? Whoa. Cigars of Arthur Avenue. And uh, white suit. <laughs> this reminds me of like the Italian movies back in the 70s. Yes. <laughs> in New York City. Like The Godfather or like. Seriously, look at the, <laughs> the expression in his eyes. <laughs> and look at that a poster. And look who's in town. Santa. Babbo Natale. <laughs> That's Italian name for oh, Santa, it is. I guess. Okay. I hope you enjoy this walk of Arthur Avenue retail market. Now we're going to finish up on Arthur Avenue and continue back around maybe to Crescent Avenue. So all the restaurants are around here. I've eaten at Enzo's before. It's delicious. You remember what you got? Um, I think I got chicken parmesan there. Uh, Seriously? We'll see. Yeah. Oh my god. Do you know that it's not an Italian dish? It's not? It's yeah. not. It's a... No, oh we're not familiar with this Sorry. area yet. It's our first time. No problem. Oh, it's okay. Um, so chicken parmesan is one of those numerous Italian dishes that you can find in New York. I don't know if you can find them anywhere else in the United States that are just, they are, I guess, inventions of the Italians, Americans who migrated here. Because mm. in Italy, you will never find anything vaguely similar to chicken parmesan. What? I'm yeah. shocked. You know what's another dish like that? What's that? That doesn't exist in Italy? Spaghetti and meatballs. Yes. <laughs> that <laughs> exactly. I know. Exactly. I wasn't thinking about that one, but that's another one of those. We don't. We have meatballs uh, with sauce, tomato sauce, but that's um, that's never mixed with pasta. Uh -oh. Never. <laughs> Or you have pasta with tomato sauce, but never the two things together. <laughs> no, I was thinking about fettuccine alfredo. Really? Yes. Fettuccine alfredo. <laughs> I don't even know what this alfredo sauce is. It's like a white sauce, right? I think it's uh, cheese and cream. Oh, cheese That's and cream. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> cream is actually rarely used as a condiment for pasta, as a dressing for pasta. Oh. You know, there is this very famous discussion about carbonara. Oh. Have you ever heard about carbonara? Carbonara. Is that the, the shrimp sauce? No, no. it's um, with guanciale, which is similar to bacon, let's say, for you to understand. Oh. 
I but think I know what it is. Yeah. It's the pink An one. An egg. Right? It's slightly yellow oh. and creamy with okay. pieces of, of um, pork. Yeah. And there is a whole discussion going on about the original recipe. Mm. So many put cream in it mm. uh, together with the eggs to make it creamier <laughs> and tastier. But actually the original recipe it doesn't require any cream. So please never put cream in the carbonara because it's not the right one. Oh, <laughs> let's cross the street and make a right. The density of the Italian businesses is drops off after this block. But they're more prevalent over here and then down Crescent Avenue. Like here, Luna Cafe. Moon Cafe. Yeah. I remember from your Little Italy walk last time, the cafe is two Fs. Yes, so you see the difference. This is with one F. So it's it's more French than Italian, actually. <laughs> they probably, I don't know what they serve in here, but they probably serve other kinds of food other than simply sweet pastries. Oh, that business across the street, the Lillo. Should we go excellent there? Excellent desserts. Let's go take a look from the outside. Yeah, be careful, watch out. Jaywalking. <laughs> More accepted in the Bronx than it is in Manhattan, I think. <laughs> you guys going inside? No, thanks. Uh, can we? We want to film we? inside. Yeah, let's go okay. take a look. All right, let's see what you think of the Little Italy's desserts. So this is a place for desserts? Yeah, Okay. And sweets. Okay. It's amazing. I thought it was mixed. Already the smell? Okay, you know, I talked about the cafe, the place where you serve coffee and, and pastries. This is exactly the smell that you have in a cafe. Oh. It's coffee mixed to, to sweet sugary things, I would say. Okay. So that's what it is. This is the cafe that she's talking about. Oh wow. Okay, so you have this is tiramisu, mm -hmm. just mono portions. Sicilian cannoli. I thought tiramisu was in the cake though, most of the time. Well, usually you make it at home. It's a very familiar kind of uh, sweet, and oh. uh, you make it in a, a like rectangular dish kind mm -hmm. of thing. And then you cut it in squares. Oh, yeah, I've seen it in rectangular too. Yes. Now, because it became very commercial, it's commercialized everywhere, especially in restaurants and something like that. Uh, they make mono portions, so they are finding new ways of making it, you know, like in, maybe in cups or in glasses. Maybe it'll be in a star shape next, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but I must say, the one that you cut in squares from home, it just tastes better than this one in the cups. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of this this type. Okay. And we have the famous cannolis. The mini cannolis, the ones that we tried last time. Yeah. And all the Italian cookies. Yeah, I would say, look, the, the most Italian ones are this type. They are um, uh, kind of drier cookies and you usually uh, put nuts, especially almonds in them. The most famous ones are the cantuccini. Cantuccini are uh, cookies with almonds from the region of Tuscany. This is interesting. It looks like a pretzel but it's like smaller and doesn't look full this is look it, it's not i'm from the north i'm sorry to the people the italians from the south because this is a southern product i think it's a tarallo it's just shaped different, differently mm. taralli are usually round that's why i'm not 100 percent sure that this is tarallo but i think that's what it is it's a kind of um, bread it's dry and crunchy and a little bit richer in fat than the classic bread. Oh. 
And then okay. you have, see this one is the classic one. This one has this black little spot inside, so for sure it's a different flavor. This one has fennel seeds inside. This one is darker, so they probably use also like they mixing another flower. And then what's this? Wow, looks like a donut. But... Um, you know, I'm not sure. I've never seen anything like this before. You're from Italy, and you still haven't seen all the pastries. Wow. Hey. Hi. Excuse me. What is this? This one. Oh, yeah. it's egg white. So, this is called uh, meringa in Italian. Meringa. Uh, meringa, yeah, exactly. It's oh. simple. Sorry. <laughs> it's simple egg white. We whip them. Uh, do you see? Whip them like snowy. Yeah, whip them. Okay. They, they become soft and full of hair. And you mix that with a lot of sugar. And that's it. It's just two ingredients, really. Oh. And then you shape little things and then you bake it in a very very low temperature in the uh, oven and that's it the, okay. re the final result is something a pastry that is of course super sweet but it's very light and crunchy and sometimes it can be chewy just a little bit chewy it's something to be tried and they have this nice look because they're white and almond croissant. That's not Italian though, I think that's French, right? Um, look, if they are real Italians here, this is not croissant, this is cornetto. Oh. Which is very similar to croissant, especially because it's shaped similarly. But the dough has way less butter and more sugar in it. Mm. So both the flavor and the, the final consistency of the pastry is different. And usually they also have uh, a little bit of filling at the very center of the pastry. The classic ones are two, um, either apricot jam or uh, custard cream. I think that's the name, the egg, the egg cream. I think it's called custard in English. And this is not like an afternoon snack or dessert. This is what we regularly have for breakfast at the bar. Oh, wow. So for breakfast, uh, you in Italy there's three ways you can have breakfast. Uh, three classic ways at least. You either have it at home, so you have maybe uh, like a couple of slices of bread with some jam on top or Nutella, or cookies and caffè latte as I told you before, or you skip it. <laughs> which is very common in Italy to skip breakfast because the main meals, unfortunately, uh, because it's not very healthy, but the main meals are lunch and dinner. Mm. Or third options, you go at the bar and you usually have an espresso or macchiato, which is an espresso with just a tiny little bit of milk. Or a cappuccino, which is accepted until noon in Italy. If you ask for a cappuccino in a cafe uh, afternoon in Italy, you're gonna be very weird. Um, so you have that plus one of these. Okay. One of these pastries. Yep. All right. So, your opinion is very authentic in here, all the pastries. I would say yes. It looks very authentic. Then, I mean, you should always try, of course. But later, we're going to be trying some real Italian food for dinner. It's nice that they decorate here for Christmas time, too. All yeah. the streets are lighted up and they have the lamps. A uh, Gidio pastry? A Gidio pastry, Egidio. yes. Oh, this is American cakes. <laughs> I mean, we have those in Italian too, but I think Americans are way better than us at this kind of super cool cakes. <laughs> <laughs> and 
And what do we have here? Oh, look at this. Look at this window oh. display. So this is Trattoria. Trattoria is like a, um, a rustic restaurant kind of thing. Oh, but I they, never knew that. They have a really cool uh, dis window display because this is very traditional Italian. It's called presepe in Italian or presepio. And um, it's just the reproduction uh, with little statues of the main Christmas scene. So Christmas mm. is, as many of you will know, it's a religious holiday, it's not a commercial holiday. Um, and it's a celebration of the birth of Jesus, which is in the, uh, for the Christian religion. Jesus is the, the incarnation of God uh, in a human. And the 25th of December, we celebrate the birth of, of this um, historical character um, who was conceived by, by God through, so his mother was a virgin, Virgin Mary. And that's why we put up these little scenes, uh, you, traditionally in Italy, not everyone does that, but uh, yeah. it's very common in the houses. You have a corner of your house, maybe uh, like a piece of furniture, you take everything out of it and you put up these things. I remember when I was a little kid, I would go, uh, we used to have that, and I would go sometimes with my dad to pick up some... What's the name of the plant that grows on the stones next to the rivers? Uh, vines? Like, no. Like that little soft musk? Maybe musk? Moss. Musk? Is it moss. possible? M-O-S-S. Yeah. Oh, moss. Moss, okay. yeah. Moss, exactly. So we would go to some little river next to home and pick up some of the moss from the stones and we would use that as a base for our presepe oh. and then put all the little statue on top of that. <laughs> That's so nice. That was very simple but some people really go crazy with that and they have these big displays. I'm talking about families not businesses. Big displays with also water running um, up uh, down from little mountains and stuff like that. So there are different levels. Mm. This is a medium low level of um, refinement of the scene. I but mean, they only have so much window space too, so. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But they did continue it over here. Oh, I like that they put also the, um, I don't know what, what it's the called. The menorah. A oh, menorah, yeah. okay. To celebrate the Jewish The Jewish holiday. Yep. Let it snow. And there's also the, the tree here and Santa has fell down. I'm not sure if that's intentional, <laughs> but... <laughs> it's Babbo Natale. <laughs> but also look at the inside, because the inside, I mean, it also looks very cozy. Wow. Right? It's nice. But also it's kind of the um, a typical display of an Italian trattoria, which is... In Italy you have I would say three cate categories of restaurants. You have the classic restaurant, which is called Ristorante. So it's very similar to the English word, which is the fancier version, I would say, like the classic restaurant where um, you go dining. So you have white tablecloths, you have everything set up and all these kind of things. Then you have second category is the Trattoria, which is of a restaurant but it's more rustic so mm -hmm. you still have all the setup with the tablecloth and everything but it's not as fancy and then third one is osteria so when you maybe go travel to italy and you see it's written osteria it means that it's mainly a place where you go drink wine uh, but they also do food and usually those are the places where the food is the best if it's a good Ooh. osteria of course because it's kind of the concept of a hole in a wall place. The focus is not that much onto the dining experience, like the serving and stuff. They are more rude. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but the focus is on the food itself, on the quality of the ingredients and all, all these things. Mm. Now this place I saw on Yelp is very, very popular. They have very, very fresh pasta. 
made to order. Yeah, this is ravioli. We have, wow, ravioli are some of my favorite pasta type. And then they make uh, the other type of more classic pasta. Probably it's egg pasta. Oh, yes. And they have a very nice display as well. Window display. I also would like to say something since we are talking about pasta. Uh, I realized that foreigners consider uh, egg pasta, talking mm -hmm. about the Italian one, of course, egg pasta is the higher quality one and the dry pasta as the lower quality one. But it's not really the case. Uh, it's just two different types because one has the egg inside and the other one is more focused on the quality of, um, of the flour and of the process of uh, drying the pasta, which is very important. Mm. Um, so just, just don't underestimate the dry pasta because I feel bad for it. <laughs> it's still a very good kind of pasta. And also there's a big church across the street. Now that we're getting into Romanian as well. Are these kind of churches common in Italy? Yes. This is still um, like a New York style kind of architecture for a church but this is more similar to what we have in Italy as a church, whereas I see uh, in other parts of New York City, especially in Manhattan, probably because they don't have much space for, to build churches. Churches are simply within buildings. Like you don't even realize from the outside that it's a church. Mm. Uh, you just know about it because they have like a, like a sign where it's written church, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like entering any normal building. Whereas, you know, in the whole Europe, it's not only in Italy. Churches, I mean, you, you know when you are in front of a church because <laughs> the architecture is very peculiar. I've seen pictures and video of grand, grand churches in Italy. Yes, absolutely. Some of them dating back to the Renaissance too. Exactly. In the Renaissance, um, the religion was still a very big deal, like a huge deal. It was the power of religion was the same as the political power. So you can imagine the Pope, for example, how much importance he had, but also the priests, how much importance they had in the smaller towns. The priest was, was like the mayor of the, city, of the town almost. Mm -hmm. And that's why so many churches that are still up nowadays, they were built uh, in those days because they had so much more money also, <laughs> because the church was so popular. So that's why. Okay, and now this is the other part of Little Italy that I haven't really explored yet. This is Crescent Avenue, down here to the right. Artuso pastry shop. That looks very nice over there. Yeah, Artuso. Oh, look, <laughs> we were talking about church. Look, this is Bishop Pernicone Plaza. Oh. It's entitled to a bishop. <laughs> <laughs> we can take this all the way back to Arthur Avenue and then try one of the restaurants there. Sure. definitely getting colder now <laughs> yeah tonight is gonna go below freezing point I don't know how much it is in uh, Fahrenheit in Celsius it's minus three hmm. actually it was snowing this morning yes yeah. it was does it snow that much in Italy or depends which region uh, it absolutely depends on the region because Italy is a very long peninsula so the, the weather, the climate in the north is very, very different than the one in the south. I come from the very up north, and, uh, but not on the mountains, because as you go up on the mountains, on the Alps, um, 
for who doesn't know which mountains there are in the north of Italy, that it's way colder, of course. Uh, so where I come from, the weather is very, the temperatures are very similar to New York. Mm. But then if you go to the south, in the southern region, like below Rome, it's very rare that it snows. In Rome, they see the snow once every 10, 15 years. Wow, that infrequent? Yes, but it actually happened the last time when I was still living in Rome. And it was a real show to see all the people outside, all the schools were closed. It was just like this of snow, wow. but everything was just closed and stuck. <laughs> and all the people on the street playing um, snowballs. <laughs> but then if you go to the south, for example, people in Sicily, they don't know how is the snow. They, if they didn't travel, they have never seen it in their entire life. Hmm. This must be some kind of club because I see a American flag here, the closed doors. American flag. <laughs> Nail shop. There's some uh, Hispanic places here too. There's a Mexican place over here and Honduras. Yes. But the main little Italy is on Arthur Avenue where we're walking back to. Yeah, it back looks to. like that. <laughs> oh, that's windy. Yeah, it's very windy. <laughs> it's very Christmassy today though, right? <laughs> it is. Because yesterday it was so warm. It felt like spring. Oh, there's the retail market again, the other side of it. Uh -huh. And also Okaka Coelho restaurant. That's not Italian. Yeah. For sure. It's good that they that we had uh, those two little cheese tasties mm -hmm. and a glass of wine. Yeah, definitely before the place closed. That's very Italian too, actually. So in Italy, nowadays, uh, what we do if we have time, if, if, if it's a relaxed day before having dinner or before having lunch if it's a Sunday we go to have aperitivo aperitivo means that you go drink a glass of wine or two and then when we drink alcohol we always have a little bit to eat on the side it's it's not rare but it's uh, I would say more common to to eat a little taralli little grissini you know, like a little bit of bread on the side together with alcohol. Mm. And aperitivo is what you do when you have time. You go eat some little tastings of something. Just little because then you want to have to want the you want to still be hungry for the lunch, right? Or the dinner, the main meal. Uh -huh. So without even planning it, we've had our aperitivo today. That's it. Let's cross the street because the other side of the street is where most of the restaurants are. I think we should try out Emilia's. You want to try Emilia's? I'll let, I'll let you pick the restaurant. I mean, if you have no preferences... I have no preferences. I've heard about Emilia. Okay. Just because of that. Maybe I read some articles on the internet about you know, authentic Italian food, and Emilia was one of the restaurants named, okay. mentioned, sorry. By the way, this place is much more crowded on the weekends, especially Friday night and Saturday night. There was one, I believe, Friday night, I came in October, I made a video here, and there were like one hour waits to get into some of these restaurants. Oh, wow. Yeah, so <laughs> you can imagine. It's like in the center of Manhattan. <laughs> and this is in an area of the Bronx that is hard to get to, too. <laughs> nice Vespa. <laughs> Do you know this oh, motor Vespa? scooter? Yeah, I know. I've seen them. Look, this is Piaggio. It's the original one. This is the, the logo. Oh. This is Italian produced in the 70s. <laughs> All right, so you want to try Emilia's? If you're okay with that. Let's go it. What do you say? 
Let's take a look at the menu first. Okay. How's Amelia's? I think we can go this, here. Yeah, this seems very authentic, right? Yes. Fresh pasta made at Amelia, so they make their own pasta. Yeah, that's very good. Okay. That's right. not even common in Italy. Okay, let's go.